Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the virtual classroom, data automation for beginners, automate data warehouses, data marts, Power BI, and whatever you want to name it, also data lake houses, and uh, see how it's possible that you can create a data platform uh, up to 10 times faster. So what is uh, Analytics Creator? I want to explain it just in a, in a nutshell. So Analytics Creator is a data automation uh, technology, uh, which orchestrates the full life cycle of a data warehouse or data lake house or data mounts, whatever. You cover the design process, the development process, the change, and also the de deployment process. And it's made uh, for experts, sure, and also for non-experts. So also uh, people who want to uh, get in the in the data journey to understand how to create a data warehouse and data mounts for your analytical applications, who this, uh, these people can also use very easily uh, Analytics Creator. And how it works? It works. Uh, we have a holistic uh, data model, a graphical data model. You will see it in our presentation. And out of this holistic uh, data model, we generate the source code instead of uh, programming manually. Analytics Creator will be mainly also used uh, for agility thoughts, yeah, and also uh, for to replace old-fashioned uh, ETL technologies. We have on our website uh, a lot of uh, success stories. I just want to recommend one or two. Uh, one of them is, um, oh, there is no logo on there. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Robert Bosch. Um, they had a data warehouse, um, the largest data warehouse uh, in the Microsoft uh, stack. Now at the moment uh, with thousands of users was built with uh, Analytics Creator. And at the beginning, um, they estimated around for the first for the first scope, 12 months of development time. And with Analytics Creator, we had done it um, in, in three months. Yeah, this is a really amazing story. Uh, the next one is um, um, about my Muesli. They are uh, beginners. They were beginners uh, three years before, and now they are really experts. Uh, with Analytics Creator. Um, you can read that story on our web page. Uh, there is a download option. I will, don't want to go it at the moment deeper in there. Do we have uh, in, for different uh, industries uh, success stories on the page? Uh, it's it's better you download it there. Yeah, and also the next one, there is a video on YouTube. Um, customer reported to us uh, that they um, created uh, interest layers uh, in Azure Store, and this was uh, 20 times faster. Yeah, we were surprised too. <laughs> and uh, we, we recorded, uh, we tried to play it again and recorded it uh, and show the customer and the view how it's possible uh, to be 20 times faster with uh, such a process. So um, I want to explain a little bit um, the division about uh, Analytics Creator behind. So Analytics Creator is a pure design time tool. Yeah, there is no runtime. So what Analytics Creator is doing, also I mentioned before, uh, we we create at first a holistic data model. Out of that, the source code will be generated, and this is the the the, the key point. Yeah, the source code will be deployed automatically in your SQL server, in your, your Azure environment, Power BI, whatever. And uh, after that, you do not need any more analytics creator. So you're completely independent. There is no runtime. There is no vendor lock from us. And this is really very important. There are many tools around, but they, they, they lock you and you have no chance to, to, to come out there. Yeah. And this is how we want to work. Yeah, We, give, we want to give uh, the customer and the partner the freedom uh, to to do whatever with the with the source code they want. Yeah, you can also modify by yourself the, the source code, and yeah, that's yours. Um, yeah, 
uh, we work 100% uh, on the Microsoft stack. So this is what we do. We concentrate our resources on that. We, we do know, or we have no target uh, possibility on Oracle. Yeah. Okay, we can export it, yeah, but we cannot generate code on Oracle, for example. We concentrate 100% on the, on the Azure stack and SQL server on a full Microsoft um, uh, environment. Yeah. And uh, that you are uh, really independent, we have an open repository. Uh, all data we, we generate or your, your model is it's, it's stored in the SQL server. And um, you, you can model also there if you don't want to do use the, the graphical user interface. And you can use it for to do your add-ons. Yeah, you can develop your, your additional functions and features uh, that you can make more out of uh, analysis creator. So um, this is an uh, architecture picture of uh, analysis creator uh, environment. Um, so on, on, on the left corner uh, to the to the right corner up, uh, you, you see the data flow. At the early beginning, you have, you have raw, raw data from ERB, CRM, any kind of data. Uh, you, you can connect with I, we have some partners, they have for connectivity tools, you can connect more than 250 sources, that's no problem. Um, um, so we get the data and in the second step, um, we, we, we create a, the, the Azure data lake house, warehouse, whatever, and modeled with, with Kimball uh, modeling approaches or, or data vault approach, whatever. Um, and after that, uh, in, the, in the segment three, uh, there are the tabular models, uh, which is used by Power BI or, or the OLAP models, the old one, and also the, the, the click, click cubes, if you want. Yeah. So this is all in the cloud. Um, we, we can export, create automatically, not only Power BI, we can also create uh, click models and also Tableau models. Yeah. So it's, it's also possible if you have your, your own uh, front-end technology, uh, you like Luca, for example, or IBM Cognos or something like that, you can connect always on the data warehouse. It's no problem. So on, on, on the fourth layer, yeah, you see the holistic data model. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Dimitri explained later. Um, so this is something uh, yeah, which, which covers the whole process. Yeah, and analytics creator uh, creates and, and steer all the data and all the data flows and the models uh, with this holistic uh, data uh, overview. Yeah, this is uh, you will see next. Yeah, about the approach. Um, so how analytics query is working? Um, at first of all, you you connect to the data source. Uh, out of the data source, uh, analytics creator help you to create um, and define the data. Uh, there are some, some wizards which uh, get out the metadata of your choices. Uh, if you have, for example, SAP or, or any ERP system, it's very easy to, to get the metadata out of there. If you have not metadata, for example, from a CSV file, you, you describe it in the, in the step two. Uh, in, the, in the third step, uh, there is an intelligent wizard um, with this intelligent wizard, you can select your, your predefined uh, uh, data, yeah, your metadata, and um, this wizard automatically creates a dimensional model out of your operational data and of the metadata. Yeah. So after that, you get a, a draft of your data model, of your analytical data model. You get your, your draft data warehouse. Uh, from from all layers to to up to um, the data model layer, and this is the place on the on the step four where you uh, do your changes, add your dimensions, uh, calculate your KPIs, do your uh, historization stuff, and all the things. Uh, this is the place where all the development uh, take place. And after that. Um, the, the source code will be generated and the structure and everything and deployed to um, the Azure Cloud or SQL Server. Yeah, this is uh, how it works. Uh, 
Um, now I want to recommend uh, uh, the new uh, data management survey uh, from uh, this year. Uh, you can see in the in the left chart that uh, yeah we are very right up a corner. This is always the best place to be uh, as an innovator and and uh, yeah a leader. So we won there um, now I think four years in a row uh, in many KPIs. These are the green uh, logos. Uh, to the first prize and yeah uh, this is very nice you can download uh, this survey and uh, from our web page uh, this is possible we have on the web page the 22 and the 23 uh, give the possibility for the download yeah so um yeah we have a lot of use cases with analytics creator I want to don't want to go uh, very deep in there on the web page. It's it's very good uh, explained. Uh, just that you see it, uh, this, you can use it for a new construction of a data warehouse for modernization. Uh, what's very nice modernization? There's a new video from our customer, Kulmbacher Beer Brauerei. Uh, they show very exactly in a half hour what they have done. Uh, with uh, with the old data warehouse uh, and how they migrated automatically to analytics creator and speed up the whole process yeah also you can use uh, analytics creator to, to generate uh, data vault models uh, data lake houses uh, sign up stuff and, and a lot of things yeah you see these are just examples yeah um, there are numerous more for sure uh, yeah this is uh, my presentation uh, now, Dimitri uh, give uh, his part. Uh, he goes through the whole process of uh, modeling a data warehouse with analytics creator. And uh, yeah, Dimitri, please, you can start. Or oh, maybe one of you have a question. No questions. OK. Well, then I will. Continue on the presentation. At the moment, I will present my screen. Yeah. You can see my screen. Peter, can yes. you confirm, please? Okay, yeah. very good. Data warehouse. Uh, to do that, uh, I will create the new uh, data warehouse repository. Uh, let's call it GMO, uh -huh, for example. Um, repository that is database containing the full definition of the data warehouse. This database is stored on the SQL server located on my uh, computer. Uh, okay. This is this one, this database, RepoDemoDWH. It was just created. And okay, let's start. Uh, I will use as a data source for my data warehouse uh, AdventureWorks database located on my computer. You can see there is AdventureWorks 2019 and we will use this database as data source for our data warehouse. Okay, first I will add a new connector. Uh, we support different kinds of connectors like SQL Server, Oracle, flat files. Uh, ODPC or Aladdin data sources, we can work together with SAP directly. We can read the metadata from SAP systems. Uh, we support all data interface, Azure Blob Storage, and so on. Okay, um, let me create connection to AdventureWorks database. Uh, I have to modify here the connection string. Uh, save test connection successful okay and now i have two possibilities um, how to create the data warehouse i can uh, import uh, connect the tables step by step input them inside them and so on or i can call data warehouse wizard and then we'll do it uh, will call the data warehouse wizard, which will create uh, the first draft version of the data warehouse automatically. 
Uh, here are the tables located and views uh, from AdventureWorks database. I will take some tables from human resources schema and uh, use them to create a data warehouse. I will create the classical Kimball uh, data warehouse with fact and dimensions. Uh, we support uh, different uh, architectures um, like Kimball or Data Vault, or we have the some kind of mixed architecture which combine both uh, best uh, the best of from uh, both technologies uh, Kimball and Data Vault. But uh, for this demo, I will create the poor Kimball uh, data warehouse. Okay, <laughs> we, what we will uh, do? We will import every uh, table. We will historize uh, historize uh, every table. <coughs> Uh, we will create dimensions from every table and we will create free effect um, transformations from employee department history, pay history and job candidate, um, candidate uh, tables. Okay, on the next screen we can define uh, uh, the names of the objects in our data warehouse. For example, all dimensions will have the dim prefix in the front. Fact transformation will have fact prefix in the front. Uh, here on the next screen we can um, set up uh, some additional properties for example we will create a calendar dimension with specific time for specific time period and the on but let's just finish and let uh, wait a bit a little bit uh, analysis create analyzes uh, metadata in adventure works database and creates for us um, the draft of our data warehouse. Here you can see the typical uh, data layer uh, diagram or layer diagram of the data warehouse. From the left to the right, there are different uh, uh, layers in our data warehouse. The source layer, okay, it's not the data warehouse layer, but here we can see the data sources which we use in our data warehouse. Then uh, the staging layer, we input the data into the staging layer, uh, then persistent staging layer. Uh, here uh, we have the historicized tables, historized tables. Uh, core layer, uh, we can see here uh, the different transformations. We transform uh, the data. Uh, into the facts and dimensions and we have here the data mark layer containing our data stars and uh, later when we will generate for example the power bi model uh, the structure of the data mark layer uh, will be reproduced in uh, the uh, power bi model okay uh, let's uh, take a look on the different objects uh, here in the diagram, for example, sources. If I click on the source, I can see the structure of my human resources department table, columns, column types, and so on. Uh, okay, the so next, this is a staging layer containing uh, the imported data. If I click on this imp department table, I can see that structure of the imp department table is the same aligned the structure of our uh, data source. Uh, this IP square, this is a definition of import package or import pipeline in case you use data factory. If I click on it, I can see here, for example, how the import will be performed. Uh, there is a mapping table between the source and target uh, columns. Uh, I can uh, create here, uh, transform the data already here, but usually it is not necessary. You usually import the data as is uh, and transform them. Uh, later, but you can mm, perform different transformations here uh, during the data input. Uh, you can define here different filters um, to uh, restrict, uh, for example, the amount of the data you will import. You can add uh, here uh, the variables, for example, and mm, for example, I can create uh, the variable timestamp uh, and uh, okay and uh, restrict uh, the data which I will import uh, using, for example, the filter modified uh, date and greater than uh, timestamp, uh, sorry, timestamp variable. Uh, using this uh, possibility, 
uh, to use uh, the variables you can uh, um, you can perform the differential data loading uh, or different uh, other uh, strategies strategies uh, how to import uh, the data uh, you can add the different scripts uh, which will be executed before and after uh, the data import uh, okay anyway you can import the data using such import packages or import uh, pipelines packages i mean we can generate integration service packages or uh, we can generate uh, 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 data factory pipelines to import the data mm, okay uh, then uh, persistent staging player uh, persistent staging player uh, it, it is not necessary to uh, to historize the data, but we always recommend to uh, use the data historization. Uh, persistent stage layer contains the historized data. If I take a look on this department table in the persistent staging layer, you can see this table has the same structure like the import table plus, uh, uh, plus uh, two, uh, three additional columns. Uh, two of them, this is these two columns that phone his that this is or date from and date to this is a validity period of specific data role uh, and uh, one more column this is this one and that's id this is a uh, surrogate key in our case this is identity column uh, and this is a typical uh, slow changing dimension hysterization as cd2 in our case mm -hmm. uh, Every time when data will be imported, the imported data will be compared with the data stored in uh, this uh, uh, STG department table and this uh, historized table. The changes will be detected and uh, stored in this historized table. Therefore, the uh, old versions of the data, uh, they uh, will be, as a validity period of old data will be closed and the new data will be added. Therefore, we have always access to the previous versions of our data. And uh, hysterization uh, can be configured here in this HP square. Uh, this is a hysterization package or hysterization pipeline. Uh, and here we can very widely configure uh, how the hysterization should be uh, performed. Uh, for example, we can uh, uh, define for every column which hysterization type uh, should be used. For example, SCD2 means uh, in case the changes in the specific column uh, are detected, uh, the old uh, data row will be closed the valid date will be set and the new data role will be added. Uh, I can change, for example, for SACA, some columns, uh, the hysterization type to CD1. In this case, for example, in case only this column modified date is changed, then um, only the actual data role in the historized table will be changed, but no history of the changes will be uh, stored. Or I can set, uh, the hysterization type to none, that means uh, the changes in this specific field will be don't uh, performed, don't detected, and uh, it can be done uh, for the unimportant columns, for example. Uh, okay, here uh, we have a lot of other um, ways how to configure, for example, uh, your hysterization. For example, what could we do in case of missing data, uh, for example, uh, you input the data and you um, and some data are missing. Uh, usually, uh, the data in the historized table uh, will be closed. The validity period of uh, the missing data row will be attached to the actual date or date of historization. You can say uh, uh, will. Uh, do not close, uh, the missing data still remain uh, valid in the historized table. Uh, there is one additional option at empty record. You can add the specific data row with specific values in case of empty uh, uh, of the missing data. And uh, you can define here uh, the volume for empty record or get this uh, values from the previous valid data row. 
sometimes very uh, useful uh, to close the gaps in the historization timeline. Um, you can uh, define the different filters, for example, if your uh, data source is very big, but uh, the most of the data in your data source table uh, remains uh, unchanged, uh, you can define uh, the filter. Uh, for example, we will import only the data for the last two months, for example, and to avoid the closing of the old data, you can define here as a source filter that uh, only the data uh, for the last two months will be historized and the old data remains uh, remain uh, un un unchanged uh, and so on. We can even uh, uh, Historize already historized data sources. For example, if your data source is, contains the history of the changes, we can take all this history of the changes into the historization table and uh, use uh, existing historization uh, for uh, for the data warehouse. Okay, uh, how technically historization works? Mm, uh, we generate stored procedures. And the uh, text of the storage procedure you can see here in this uh, tab. Uh, and uh, you can even modify the storage procedure if you will. Uh, you should uh, set the storage procedure type to manually created. And here uh, you can modify the storage procedure even if you want. Uh, and uh, usually it is not necessary, but if you, if you wish, uh, you can do it. Uh, Okay, you can add some uh, scripts uh, which will be executed for before and after uh, historization. Uh, as I said, our historization uh, can be uh, configured very, very uh, widely. You can uh, configure almost every um, part of the historization. Uh, okay, mm, since the next uh, layer in our data warehouse, this is a core layer. Mm, and here you can see this blue squares, uh, blue, uh, blue. Uh, Dimitri, we have a question maybe just on this step. Yes, good mm -hmm. possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I read it. Uh, yes. These tables are stored separately, like for staging table, persisted mm -hmm. staging tables. Uh, yes, we have here at the moment, uh, for example, the imp department, this is a, a table in the data warehouse and the stg department, this is another table. We have two different tables and imp department tables this will be, uh, uh, the content of this table will be uh, erased every time when we import the data and the data in persistent staging layer remains, uh, re remains stable. Uh, they uh, will be usually never deleted uh, and uh, this is the main layer uh, in the data warehouse containing uh, the data. Uh, and there this is the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. Can't we save history table in staging tables only? Uh, could you repeat, please? Can we store what? Uh, uh, can't we save history table in staging tables only? Uh, it is, uh, as I said, uh, okay, uh, f first it's not necessary to historize the table. Usually you can, for example, um, have only uh, the staging layer where you uh, import the data and uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, it is not necessary to have the persistent staging layer. It's just uh, our recommendation, this uh, was, it was a recommendation of the data warehouse wizard. Uh, but as I said, for example, we have some customers who Input the data and then uh, and have no uh, persistent staging player. This is uh, in this case you have only a staging player without persistent staging player. Sure, it is possible. Or you can have the staging player and then persist uh, in uh, by another way uh, your data. Uh, after, for example, in the core layer, I will show how how how, how it works. Okay, uh, uh, then let me continue. Uh, but very important, that's what I show uh, now. Uh, this is just um, as a recommendation of the data warehouse uh, wizard. Uh, you can uh, create your own uh, architectures. An analytics creators um, 
of um, allow you to create your own uh, architectures and uh, do uh, uh, everything like uh, like you wish. Uh, you have no uh, boundaries uh, and, and no restrictions uh, in the architectures which you create using analytics. Create and this, 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 this architecture. This is just um, the pure typical Kimball architecture containing staging and persistent staging layer, import and historization, but uh, you are free and you can, uh, of course, create your own uh, architectures. Okay, now uh, then, uh, okay, core layer uh, or transformation layer. Mm, uh, this blue square, this is a transformation, a typical transformation and analysis creator. This is a view uh, and uh, analysis creator can create the views for us. Uh, here we can see the mm, tabular definition of mm, the mm, transformation. We support different kinds of transformations. Uh, this is a regular transformation. You can create your own views. In this case, uh, you will use a manual transformation. You can uh, create uh, SQL Server scripts, storage procedures, store transforms the data. You can even create your own integration service packages and uh, uh, inject them uh, into analysis creator repository. And in this case, you will use the external transformation. Uh, but in our case, uh, we recommend uh, to use uh, the uh, views and regular transformations. Uh, and here, it is very easy. We have uh, STG department uh, as a source table for this transformation. We expose just every column from this table here uh, in this view. Uh, what is interesting here, uh, um, the predefined transformations. Let me remove every predefined transformation and save. And let's take a look on the view generated by analytics creator. Okay, uh, maybe I will remove this like to create a unknown member. Okay. And you can see it's just the view which uh, expose all uh, expose all uh, columns from the STG department table as is without any transformation, without any change. <coughs> uh, um, but uh, uh, okay, uh, then let me do some modifications. For example, create unknown member is important part of the data warehouse technology. Uh, uh, you can see here this union select part. Uh, it contains the um, unknown member for my transformation. In case, for example, I have the facts uh, and uh, the fact transformation uh, has uh, the reference to uh, the department which is missing in the department table. In this case, such references will be uh, mapped uh, with this unknown member. Uh, this is typical for uh, data uh, warehouse, uh, technology to avoid uh, the uh, missing uh, references to the dimensions. Okay, then um, predefined transformations is very easy. Uh, we have some uh, analysis analysis here can uh, uh, have such predefined transformation like trim, for example. Uh, trim transformation. Uh, every predefined transformation based on uh, the field type uh, which I uh, uh, used in uh, of the columns used uh, in the transformation. Uh, for example, trim transformation will remove uh, leading and trailing spaces from every um, uh, string column. And uh, if I have this, if I use this uh, trim transformation, my uh, transformation, you can see. Um, Every uh, var car and can var car column has now this R trim L trim uh, functions um, uh, to remove the leading controlling spaces. I have let me add some more uh, predefined transformations. For example, string null to an A. In this case, uh, we convert every null string to n dot a dot string. Uh, or let me. But some more transformations, for example, number nine to zero. I don't know. Okay, and okay, we have now no uh, number columns. Anyway, uh, the predefined transformations this is very efficient and easy way uh, to uh, 
perform some uh, type uh, based transformations uh, for uh, every column. Uh, you can uh, define your own uh, predefined transformations. Uh, it's very easy mm, and uh, later you can use them together in your uh, in your transformations uh, to easily uh, perform type based uh, transformations for your columns. Uh, okay, um, let me take a look on uh, this, for example, employee department history. This is a fact transformation with set the filter. Uh, this is the fact transformation created for us by analytics creator. And let's take a look on this <laughs> fact transformation. Uh, here, uh, analysis data found uh, uh, imported uh, all foreign keys from uh, the Adventure Works database and found that employee department history is mm, referenced uh, can be referenced by uh, department employee and shift tables it has uh, foreign keys uh, with these three tables and uh, analysis creator created for us this mm, fact typical fact transformation. Uh, we get from every uh, every table here, this is a historized table, and every historized table has a surrogate key, uh, this is SATS ID column, and uh, we just get from every uh, historized table uh, the uh, surrogate key and expose it in our uh, fact transformation. Uh, very important, um, every table here this is the historized table, and uh, it is pretty difficult to uh, join uh, the historized table because uh, uh, the business keys of, uh, in every uh, historized table uh, are uh, uh, they are not unique, and uh, it is difficult to join uh, the historized tables. And uh, what we do uh, to join, uh, to create uh, the fact transformations, uh, we use different kinds of historizations. And in our case, we use um, the historization of tip snapshot. What, uh, is, uh, what is it? What, uh, I'm, uh, what, what is it, uh, the snapshot historization? Uh, you can see there is a, a table CFG snapshot, this is the first table in this transformation, the main table in this transformation. This table contains uh, the dates. Uh, uh, this table contains, uh, is created automatically by analysis creator. Uh, this table contains at least one data row with the actual date, and this data is stored in the column snapshot dates, uh, date. And imagine uh, there is one uh, data row in this uh, snapshot uh, table. Uh, containing uh, the actual date, and um, uh, uh, then we uh, get uh, from every historized uh, table only uh, uh, the data which were uh, valid for specific snapshot date. And uh, for example, you can see every table showing uh, used here in this um, transformation has this specific. Uh, uh, joint conditions, snapshot date between that font hist and that bis hist. Using this pair condition, we get from every historized table only the data which uh, were valid for specific snapshot date. And then we use uh, business key uh, relationships to uh, join uh, the tables uh, tables together, uh, like department ID, department ID, and so on. And uh, in case there is only actual date in the snapshot um, table, um, we expose and uh, this fact transformation will contain only the actual data uh, and uh, will give you uh, only the actual facts. But you can uh, add more snapshots to this snapshot table. For example, end of the previous month, end of the previous previous months, and so on. And in this case, you can have access to the old versions of the day of your data. Uh, we, the snapshot table uh, uh, will be used later in the data mart layer as snapshot dimension, and uh, the snapshot dimension can contains more than one snapshot, not only the actual date, but also uh, the you know, old. 
uh, snapshots and using these old snapshots uh, you can have access to the previous versions of your data and it's very very useful and uh, using uh, this technology snapshot historization you will uh, have access to the uh, old versions of your data uh, in case you, just, you don't need uh, you only will work to us with this actual data you can set the historization type to actual only in this case mm, the view will be changed there is no snapshot table there is one additional uh, where condition uh, that this is this equal 9999 12 uh, 31 this is, uh, this is the attribute how to recognize uh, the actual data and the historized tables and uh, of course uh, it is not uh, necessary to use uh, uh, snapshot historization but it is uh, very very uh, useful you can use for example snapshot historization, historization have only the actual date uh, as snapshot but later you can extend your snapshot um, table snapshot dimension by the new snapshots and then you will have access uh, to the uh, historical data in your data mart uh, and in your all of cubes. Uh, well, um, then uh, let me uh, do something. Uh, I will, for example, you can see every transformation here. This is a view, and sometimes it is um, uh, important to uh, persist the data in the views, and we can do it at persisting uh, we can persist the data stored and the views uh, okay that's one then you okay i will click on synchronize data warehouse um, here uh, you can see we can store the content of the view in the table. This is a persist uh, materialization or uh, the, the persisting of um, the uh, transformations, persisting on the views. Uh, you can see this uh, table has the same structure like the view, uh, and the persisting will be uh, done using uh, persisting storage procedures. And here, if I when I click on this PP square, I can see uh, this is persisting package or persisting pipeline. Uh, you can see uh, how the persisting uh, work uh, works. Um, okay, we support different kind of uh, persisting. Uh, persisting. Uh, the full persisting means uh, the content of the persisting table will be every time um, uh, deleted and. Uh, the table will be every time uh, filled uh, uh, new. Uh, we support different uh, types of, uh, for example, merge persisting, historical, incremental persisting. To, um, it is possible to uh, um, detect the changes between the uh, source, uh, the persisting source, and persisting table, and only modify um, uh, the changed data, insert the new data, and delete the uh, uh, deleted data. Uh, well, uh, and as I said, persisting will be uh, done using uh, the storage procedure. You can see here this is the text of the storage procedure uh, generated by analytics data to, uh, to, to, to perform uh, the persisting process. And uh, you can add the scripts which will be executed before and after persisting process. Okay, uh, how the persisting. Uh, let me, okay, I will persist every every um, fact transformations. Let me do it. Uh, persisting. Use the same persisting package. Add persisting. Well, um, let me add something, uh, uh, some additional columns to the fact transformations. For example, uh, employee department history. I will add calendar dimension to uh, this uh, transformation. Uh, in the employee department history, there are um, 
two columns, like for example, start date and end date. This is uh, uh, a, uh, the information about uh, the employer when the specific uh, employer started to work in specific department and finished um, to work now in the department. Okay, and um, but instead of the date columns, I will add here the ID from calendar dimension. Uh, analysis creator prepared for us um, the calendar dimensions. This is this one, team calendar. I click on it, I can see this is just the view, and uh, this view contains the, well, every date in the specific uh, time period of the new data row. You can modify, of course, this calendar dimension, add more columns or modify uh, the existing columns. Uh, uh, that is, of course, possible. And um, I will have in my fact transformation not the date columns, but ID from calendar dimension. And I can do that. To do that, I can use a calendar macros. Add calendar macro. Okay, you can see here. Uh, this date to ID, at date to ID, uh, date to ID, this is macro. Macro, this is a uh, very important uh, mechanism in analysis creator, how the macro work, I will show you. You can see here some macros, and you can, of course, create your own macros. Let me take a look on this date to ID macro. Page it. Okay, what is macro? Macro in our case this is just a, uh, a transactor SQL code, uh, and some parts of this code were uh, replaced by placeholder. This double dot one, this is just a placeholder, and later when I call my macro, this double dot one will be replaced by the first macro parameter call, and. Uh, we support different kinds of languages. In our case, this is the Unreactor SQL. And um, when macro will be executed or macro will be used, uh, this double dot one will be just replaced by the first macro parameter. And if I take a look on my uh, transformation, I call here this date to ID and uh, is this parameter t1 start date. If I take a look on my view, I can see the start date, this macro call was replaced by the macro and double dot one is replaced here by the first macro parameter. And uh, it's very, very uh, simple, but uh, very powerful uh, mechanism, how to create the small uh, transformation bricks. Uh, okay, you can call macros in macros, uh, no problem. And um, uh, in our case, using this macro, we convert uh, the date, start date, and end date into ID from calendar dimension. This macro was created together with calendar dimension, is bound to the calendar dimension. And uh, as I said, you can create your own macros uh, and use them in all, uh, in, in, on different places in your data warehouse. Important is, when I change the macro, every transformation uh, used using this macro will be automatically changed to. Okay, let me rename the columns. I will call them FK start date and FK end date. Okay, and maybe, uh, okay, that's key. Okay. Uh, let me take a look on this transformation. This is, for example, employee pay history. I would add here one more. Uh, we have here, for example, red rate change date. Okay. Let me add here some facts. For example, I have here uh, the rate as uh, the um, it will be a measure in my uh, fact uh, transformation in the data mart there. Okay, and here in the job candidate, uh, let me take a look. I have here uh, okay, 
no it's not necessary to change here something okay um well um then uh let me click here on the synchronized over hub button when i click on the synchronized over hub button it is important this model which i have on my screen will be materialized and uh, on my sql server the new database will be generated this database called uh, dwh in our case demo dwh uh, demo dwh this is uh, the name of my repository and uh, every time when i click on synchronize dwh uh, this model as i said will be materialized uh, here and i can see here in this database the structure of my data warehouse and uh, when I do something, for example, let me add uh, one additional columns to this transformation. Let me add something wrong and test. I will put here in the little statement something wrong. Uh, I can store here this uh, changes, but when I click on synchronize the OHA, analytics data will try to uh, materialize the structure and I see uh, the, an error invalid column name in the transformation employee department history yes i can see there is a uh, red uh, square bar around my uh, transformation and uh, okay uh, see there's something wrong okay i can click here on the button create in dwh and i will see it's the same error message there's something wrong okay let me delete this wrong column save the ATNTWH successful synchronized data warehouse again successful. Okay. Well, um, okay. Then uh, let's take a look on our data mart layer. Data mart layer is, I would say, most important interface layer of our data warehouse. Uh, and uh, here we can mm, define some. Uh, attributes and properties uh, related to uh, your OLAP cubes, to your Power BI models. And uh, first, uh, uh, how the objects will be exposed in the data mart layer. If I take a look on my team department uh, transformation, I can see here this table, stars, and here we can see in which star this team department transformation will be exposed as, in our case, as dimension. I, uh, uh, the Waha visa created for us uh, a data star uh, called star, and uh, team department will be exposed here in this dimension in this star, uh, data star. Okay, employee department history we can see uh, will be used in the star as effect transformation. Uh, and um, now uh, you can, for example, you can see is this transformation effect employee department history has two uh, columns related to calendar dimension. And uh, we have here only one calendar dimension and it is wrong. And let me modify it. Uh, I click on this T square uh, um, of my effect transformation, and here I can see some column related information about uh, my effect transformation. And for example, I can see that the column uh, FK end date, sorry, FK start date is bound to my team calendar dimension this is all a preference column but the, the end date is not bound because you cannot bound uh, bind uh, two different columns uh, to the same uh, dimension uh, let me create the new uh, calendar dimensions for this specific end date let me team and the date. Okay. Comment. Okay, that's safe. Okay, now I can see uh, there are 
two uh, Calendar dimensions. Uh, first of them is Team Calendar, and second of them is Team End Date. Okay, let me rename the Team Calendar into the Team Start Date and Team Start Date. Okay, simple state of our house. Now we have two calendar dimensions in our date of our data mark layer, dim start date, dim end date. And uh, dim uh, employee pay history is bound to calendar dimension two. And uh, instead to bound it to the start date, I will create the new calendar dimension to call it dim uh, rate change date. And save. Okay, synchronized state of our house. Now we have, we will have three different calendar dimensions. And uh, at the moment, okay, we have three different calendar dimensions in our uh, data model layer: start date, end date, and rate change date. Okay, let me add some measures to our facts. Uh, I can use it using this measure tab. Uh, for example, employee department history. This is typical fact less fact transformation. And uh, I will add some aggregations like a number of uh, departments, number distinct out of employees. Okay, I would say it's an us. Uh, here in this measure tab, we can define the measures for our all up cube. For tabular or multi-dimensional cube or for uh, our power bi uh, model uh, uh, i will later create uh, the power bi model and uh, here uh, okay there are two columns statement tabular statement multi-dimensional you can just create your own uh, statements here but i will uh, use uh, the standard aggregate uh, aggregation functions uh, distinct count uh, okay, uh, there is um, one um, additional um, uh, possibility of analytics creator. We can automatically gain, generate the measure names uh, based on uh, the templates. Usually, of course, you can uh, use the own measure names, but for tabular all of cubes, it's important that every measure should be unique. Uh, therefore, uh, you can, for example, use our um, measure uh, names uh, based on templates uh, for example you can see there is a template aggregation name uh, column name table name in the column parsed measure name you will can see how the measure will be uh, called distinct count of department and then uh, in breaks on the name of the fact transformation uh, but as i said of course you can use your own um, uh, measure names Okay, let me add some more measures. For example, this is employee pay history. Uh, I will add the rate zoom and employee as distinct count, save. And for job candidate, I will add only one measure. It's just the distinct well, okay. I would say my data warehouse is ready. I will store it in the cloud. Uh, when I store the data warehouse, this model will be stored in my account. Every uh, user of Analytics Creator has their own uh, storage place in our cloud. If I store um, this repository, it will be stored. If I store it again, for example, I can click uh, Save to Cloud one more time. The previous version will be not deleted, but uh, remain uh, uh, in the cloud. And if I click on Load from the cloud, I can see the moment demo DWH, demo DWH. I can see there are the different uh, old versions of my data warehouse, which I can uh, load from the cloud. You can store your repository into the file. For example, I can save to file. 
and uh, this is uh, set data the repository or the repository will be stored on the SQL file and you can uh, use this uh, SQL file later to uh, load the data uh, just to load the repository uh, well uh, and uh, for example you can store your repository into the file this is a just a text file containing the SQL commands and you can uh, later uh, use this file in your version controlling system you can store it uh, in your heat uh, in your uh, version controlling system the bucket and so on uh, therefore uh, and, uh, okay using this um, mechanism you can um, store uh, the repository in the version controlling system Okay, uh, but uh, you should understand what we created right now is just a model of the data warehouse, and now we have to deploy it. And um, we should create the data warehouse based on this model. And to do that, uh, we should generate the deployment package. Uh, now I will generate the new deployment package. For example, I will uh, deploy and um, you can deploy your data warehouse everywhere. You can deploy your data warehouse on premise. Uh, in this case, we will generate uh, the SQL Server database. We will we can generate the uh, multi-dimensional uh, tabular OLAP cubes. We can generate the uh, okay Power BI models, but in, okay tabular OLAP cubes. We can uh, generate uh, integration service packages uh, and uh, well. But we can um, publish your um, that data warehouse on uh, into the Microsoft Cloud. In this case, uh, the SQL Server on uh, the Azure database will be generated. We can generate Azure Data Factory pipelines uh, to import the data, to persist the data, to exercise the data. We can generate the tabular OLAP cubes uh, or uh, on, on Azure, we can generate uh, the Power BI uh, models on in, in the cloud, uh, and uh, now I will um, publish my data warehouse uh, into the cloud. Uh, and how it works? Let me show you. Okay, uh, we have we connect to our uh, SQL Server in the cloud. Okay, there is our SQL. SQL Server in the cloud, and here in the cloud we have a database called AV. This database now is empty, and we will deploy our data warehouse into this AV database. Okay, first deploy uh, cloud. Okay, the probability we will deploy into the server. Uh, and I just did, uh, the database name is AV, and we use standard SQL security. Okay, it is not necessary to deploy directly from Analytics Creator. We generate the Visual Studio solution, and we can deploy later uh, by yourself. Uh, without Analytics Creator, uh, uh, SQL Server had, uh, has uh, some tools how to deploy um, your databases, how to deploy your OLAP cubes, how to deploy your integration service packages or Azure pipelines, but uh, we will deploy directly from Analytics Creator. Okay, in this case, we will generate the backpack files. Backpack files, this is the most modern way how to deploy the SQL Server databases. And uh, then we will deploy the backpack file. Okay, here are the different uh, deployment options. Okay, then we will generate the XMLA script containing the definition of our Power BI model and uh, compatibility level as Power BI. And we will deploy our Power BI uh, model into the Power BI uh, in our, into our Power BI cloud. Uh, we have here, let me show you, Power BI. This is our test Power BI. We have here a um, workspace, uh, AV. This workspace at the moment is empty. Uh, 
we have the Power BI Premium um, subscription. Therefore, this Power BI Premium subscription has, uh, oops, I don't know why, but okay, yes. Uh, this Power BI Premium subscription has um, the uh, XMLA endpoint, and we can use this XMLA endpoint uh, to deploy uh, the changes, uh, to deploy the Power BI models. I can connect to this Power BI endpoint. This is this one. And you can see now Okay, come on. There is no databases in this Power BI endpoint, and we will deploy there. Okay, I should end. On. Okay, AV. Uh, okay, now it's okay. Okay, and create cube during deployment. Okay, and I think it was okay. And uh, we will generate Azure Data Factory pipelines. Uh, you can see we have here uh, all different packages or pipelines uh, one for import, one for historization, one for system pipeline, and a workflow package. This is um, uh, uh, or work for pipelines. This is the pipeline which will execute every other pipeline in the correct order. Okay, uh, and uh, we will this configuration. Okay, and here it's not not unimportant, but let's do it. Mm, okay, I think we can start. Let me save. Okay, I stored my. Uh, deployment package and uh, let let me uh, let me check if everything is mm -hmm. okay and let's try to deploy um, when i deploy analysis data will generate the visual studio uh, project or sql server data tools project and uh, in our case, we will uh, deploy directly from Analytics Creator. As I said, it is uh, not necessary to deploy directly from Analytics Creator. Uh, usually, uh, we do not recommend to deploy uh, into the productive environments, but if you have the test or test or development environment, you can surely deploy directly from Analytics Creator. Uh, for example, to deploy backpack, files uh sql server uh, has uh, the uh, own utility this is uh, the uh, sql package.exe uh, utility uh, using this sql package uh, utility you can deploy the deckpack files everywhere on premise or into the azure and okay uh well uh deployment is done let us check this is our Azure data factory uh, database AV refresh uh, now we can see now we have uh, uh, the uh, deployed database the uh, import tables uh, staging tables uh, and so on use uh, here yes now we have our uh, deployed uh, database then uh, let me take a look on to the our power bi here you can see oops, there is the new uh, data set uh, created by analytics creator this data set contains uh, the uh, uh, power bi model uh, this power bi model has the same structure like our uh, data mask layer and uh, let me wait a moment open our we'll do it in another window and uh, data factory and data factory 
analysis creator created for us an Azure Data Factory ARM template, and I will import this ARM template into our uh, empty Azure Data Factory. Uh, at the moment, this data factory is uh, empty. You can see there is no pipelines, no data sets. The only what I have in our Azure Data Factory, uh, we have here two integration service runtimes. One of them is bound with my uh, demo SQL Server, and another one, uh, this is the auto, auto, resolve, uh, auto resolve integration runtime. We can use it to um, work with our Azure SQL Server. Okay, and now I will import ARM template generated by Analytics Creator. load file. Okay. Uh, where did we store our uh, deployment? One moment, please. Okay, in the set temp. Okay, it's uh, temp. And here, this is a new directory. Every time when deployment package is uh, uh, generated, the new directory will be uh, created. And here we have the file, this JSON file, demo GW JSON. This is an ARM template generated for us by Analytics Creator. And let's uh, store it. Okay, Analytics Creator. No, this is. That's a factory. Okay, and review and create. Okay, and now this uh, ARM template is generated by Analytics Creator will be uh, deployed into our Azure Data Factory. Okay, and let's take a look on the Azure Data Factory now. Okay, here you can see the different pipelines generated by Analytics Creator. For example, there is one import pipeline. Here you can see the historization pipeline. Okay, the persisting pipeline and one workflow pipeline using this workflow pipeline Will be, this workflow pipeline will be, we will start it to perform the import, historization, and persisting. The only what we have to do, we should bind our uh, integration runtimes with the linked services. We have here two linked services. One of them is AdventureWorks. This is our data source. And uh, we have to uh, bind it to our uh, integration service runtime. In our case, it should be integration service runtime demo. Okay, database name. We'll use Windows authentication. Okay, oops, I think let me demo. I think Okay, test connection on. Connection successful. Okay, this is the first our source pipeline, and the second pipeline. This is a D ah, sorry, not pipeline, a linked server, and then second linked server. This is DWH. This is our uh, Azure um, SQL server. Okay, this is correct. Auto resolve integration from Azure subscription and partner network. Server name, database name is AV, authentication type is SQL authentication, and password is this one. Test connection, successful, apply. Well, um, as I said, uh, only what we have to do after deployment, we should bind our linked services with uh, according integration runtimes. And let me execute our workflow package or workflow pipeline. Okay, debug. Okay, pipeline will be executed. And 
with a little bit the data from our uh, on-premise uh, Azure data uh, uh, Adventure Works database will be uh, loaded into the Azure uh, database. And uh, okay, wait a little bit. He is ongoing. Okay, let me do some more. Uh, uh, one more step I have to uh, uh, I, I, I have to do uh, this uh, data set created by analytics data. We have to, uh, uh, to, to uh, we, we should renew the uh, credential properties. Uh, okay, uh, settings. And here we have this data source credentials. Can edit credentials. And we should click on sign in. And okay, credentials are updated. Now our uh, data set is ready to is ready to work. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, okay, don't let's take a look on our data factory. Okay, persisting is in progress. Succeed, su succeeded. Okay, uh, our um, data uh, factory pipeline is uh, uh, done. Uh, data are loaded. Let me check. Okay, adventure works. For example, uh, import table. If the data are imported, okay, we can see the data are imported and okay one more stink back to the department history okay and now uh i will process my wall of cube i click on the refresh button and all of you will be processed or data model, Power BI data model will be processed. Okay, I hope the refreshing is done. And uh, now I can create um, the Power BI uh, reports. Let me uh, click, create the quick insights. Uh, and now uh, Power BI uh, will create the quick insights for me and uh, take some seconds and but uh now is power, our power bi model is filled up with the data let's click on view insights you can see uh there are the quick insights created by uh by, by power bi for our uh, data which we have loaded uh into the power bi model Okay, now we created our uh, data warehouse from scratch. We deployed it into the uh, uh, to, to, to the Azure. We created the Power BI uh, data model, and uh, okay, uh, I think uh, uh, I'm done with my presentation. If you have questions, please you can ask me. Thank you, Dimitri. For Welcome. a great presentation. So let's see if we have now some questions here. At the moment, not, but maybe somebody wants. Uh, it's very important. I deployed my data warehouse uh, on uh, onto the Azure, but uh, the same model you can deploy uh, on premise. You can deploy, for example, the data warehouse on premise and, and create the Power BI uh, in the cloud, a Power BI model in the cloud. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, I mean, you can create your own. Uh, environment uh mixed environment uh, containing on-premise and azure uh, parts uh, 
uh, and the model remains the same. Uh, it is not necessary to change the model of the data warehouse. And the model which we generated was created by data warehouse wizard, but you can create your own models. Let me show you maybe some uh, models, mm, uh, some some uh, some projects uh, from uh, some of our uh, partners. Uh, let me uh, show you, for example, I don't know, let me take this one. Okay, this is uh, the data warehouse from one of our customer, uh, the data sources, the customer use uh, the mainly SAP uh, tables and you can see here the different data stars. Okay, for let me set the filter, for example. Okay, this is uh, open purchasing orders data star. Uh, let me take one more data star, I don't know. Production data star. And, um, as I said, uh, using analytics creator, you can create very complex data warehouses. Analytics creator is not, not, not only the data warehouse generator, this is a data lineage tool too. You know, for example, uh, let me take a look on this SAP table, sub-ZBE log, and I will set the filter and we'll, we'll see so immediately uh, where the data from this specific SAP table will be used uh, in which factor transformation and which uh, component in my data warehouse and so on. Uh, as I said, for the big complex data warehouse projects, analytics data, uh, it's not only the data warehouse can generate it, but the data lineage tool uh, and without such tool it's very difficult to understand what uh, will be done with my data in the data warehouse and uh, how the data will be transformed and uh, so on and uh, using such a uh, tool like analytics data it's very very easy to understand what happens with my data in my data warehouse you can go to our website and uh, ask for the trial version. There is a, a button free trial. Uh, please use this. Um, you have now a video. We, we, we put the video on YouTube. Um, it's easier for you to remember what you have seen. Just go step by step through what Dimitri showed you and uh, use the trial version for that. You have 30 days and you, when you have questions, uh, please uh, contact us. Our support uh, will help you for sure. Yeah, um, if there are no more questions. Thank you. Bye bye.